Will's up next. What's up, Will? He says, hey, guys, I have an electrician with a GMB and, a, and website who wants to expand their reach further than the presumed 10K proximity radius enforced by Google My Business. Would it be a matter of creating new landing pages for the suburbs slash cities they want to expand into and in those pages also describe the services they would like to offer, then proceed with the usual battle plan strategy to get those new locations to rank? Uh, also, by creating the ranking of this new content, creating and ranking this new content, would the GMB then start to rank for the new locations or have I got this wrong? Well, it may, but it's it's very difficult to overcome the proximity issue with GMB. It's not that it can't be done. Marco, you know, we Marco will tell you it can be done and we know it can be done. We've done it, um, but it requires a lot of effort depending, again, it's it depends on a lot of factors. But like what we teach in local GMB pro can help you to overcome those proximity issues, but it requires work and consistent effort to do so. Um, but what other, what are your other options, right? Your only options are to, to rank organically by doing what you just mentioned, which is to create location-based silos, essentially, or landing pages, which can be become silos, which is honestly how you should do it. I've got just quickly on a, on a side, I've got a, a pest control client. Uh, it's the same pest control client that had their GMB suspended for like two months um, for just some stupid edit that I made to their page. Anyways, it finally we finally got it reinstated. And uh, because of proximity issues, they are not ranking in near as many three packs as they used to. We used to dominate in a very broad area, like I'm talking like five county area. Um, and now they predominantly rank in the, the county that the business is physically located in. But a lot of the you know, adjacent areas are not, they're not getting very good results in, as far as the three pack goes. So um, I actually had uh, my blogger, she, she's been blogging for them for, you know, years. This client has been a client of mine for years. Well, I, I sent her some training on how to, I, I went and set some silos up in the site and I said, look, we're going to switch from doing more topical type posts to doing more geographically. You're still going to have, you know, obviously topical relevance, but we're going to target every post. We do three posts per week for this client. And we have been for years. So what I did is I said, okay, look, here's the counties. I created silos for them. There's, you know, this many cities within the county. What I want you to do is for the next, you know, and uh, every single time you create a post, I want you to create a post. It's a topical post, but I want you to target a specific area within that county, optimize it for that area, and then add it to that category, that location-based silo. And then we do the mono silo linking structure, internal linking structure, which is like daisy chaining posts together with no uh, reciprocal links. Anyways, we started this about three, maybe four weeks ago now. And just yesterday, as a matter of fact, or maybe it was Monday. Um, anyways, this week, I, uh, was, I, I was just reviewing one of her blog posts that she created and we're in a very specific county right now um and she has been for the last several weeks because there's a lot of locations in this county so i was looking at her blog post and i was just curious and i was like oh let me go see what how this is performing and i did a search for that particular you know their primary service plus the location that was mentioned in the blog post even though the blog post was not about their primary service it was a bug related like a pest it was about silverfish, actually. This company does mosquito and tick control, like outdoor pest control. But this blog post was about a um, was about silverfish, but she optimized it for that particular location. So I did a search for mosquito control plus that location. And lo and behold, not only was that post ranked, even though it wasn't about mosquito control, uh, it, the post was ranked in the organic section, but so was the homepage of the site for which is, is, is optimized for mosquito control. Um, but it was, again, it was way outside of where they're physically located. So they got two organic rankings from that. And it's just because of the, the relevancy that she's been able to create the location relevancy by creating that monosilo structure. I showed her how to do it. So I provided her with some training videos. We talk about this in the mastermind too, by the way. Um, and then, uh, by linking from those from some of those internal posts or from within that silo to the home page, it actually pushed not only the post but the home page to rank on page one for organic for that, that keyword. So my point is you can do all of this organically and that's really the only option you have or else the other option would be to get spam GMB listings, which I don't recommend doing anymore um, because of Google being on a you know a war path a rampage lately or for the last many months. Um, and or the, or the other option is to 
do the organic SEO as well as employ or implement the local GMB pro methods, which again, requires consistent effort to get results. If you combine those two though, it is very possible that you can get the GMB to start ranking in some of the other areas, but it takes a lot of effort. And so what is that cost worth? You know what I mean? Like how much are you getting paid to do it? I don't know that it, you, you'd be compensated enough to do it. It really depends on the level of competition. Marco, I know you've got some comments on that. Yeah, yeah. It, it all depends. It's time and effort versus what this client is willing to pay you yeah. for your work. I mean, this is for a client and, and you, have to, you have to understand the math here, whether it, it's actually worth it for the client to go there. Now, if it is and you're going to be paid for it, there are specific things that you can do. You have to create a relationship, as, as Bradley did, between that location that, you're, that, that you want to be displayed in and, and your business centroid, because your, your centroid, as you said, uh, 10 kilometers, I mean, maybe more, maybe less, who knows, only Google knows. But it, it's that relationship where, where the centroid can be related and we've seen it bleed over into uh, nearby cities, into a nearby county maybe. But you have to give the, the bot, right? You have to give that, that, that the, the math, <laughs> the, the algorithm, a reason to, to create that relationship between your business centroid, which is where, where your business is located and the, and the surroundings, and that area that you're targeting outside of, of that proximity. So you have to override what we call overriding the, the proximity factor. And there are very specific things that you could do that, that I've discussed in both our mastermind and in local GMB Pro to accomplish that. And it's specifically through the GMB and in conjunction with what Bradley just shared in here. I'm not going to share it, of course, in here because it's paid training and people have paid a lot of money to get that. And so, but, but I mean, what Bradley gave you are great suggestions. I don't know, Will is in Australia. If they have a post office with street address in Australia, then by all means, go get a pin in the area where you want to rank. It's a lot easier to work in another GMB. Now that it's another thing that we teach in, in local GMB Pro, how to optimize your Google My Business listing so that it's ready and, and, and ready to go by the time the pin comes back. Yeah. And the last thing I would recommend is, you know, this is not SEO, but it's a way to get into the maps pack. I, I don't know about if he's in Australia, if they do this in Australia, but in, here in the United States, if you have a GMB and you use Google ads, search ads, and you enable the location extension, as long as you end up with the, high, the highest quality score, which that's, you know, your max cost per click bid or your, or your max cost per click, yeah, your M max CPC bid, uh, but also increasing your quality score. So just having really good ads, high, you know, super optimized ads, a really good landing page, that kind of stuff. You can get your um, GMB to rank in the maps three pack above the, the three pack. Like in other words, it ranks in there with it, but it's an ad. And so, uh, and it will rank in the three pack as well as if somebody clicks to expand the maps pack to show more, it'll rank at the top there. And you can do that by using Google ads, search ads, um, with the location extension enabled. And if there's nobody else competing, like if there's no other advertisers, other companies using Google ads with the location extension enabled, then you don't even have to have high quality score to get in that maps pack. You'll be the only one. If you are competing with other companies that are doing the same thing, then the way to outrank them in the maps three pack, even though it's a paid ad, is to get your, your quality score higher, which means a more relevant ad, higher click through rate, better landing page experience, all of that kind of stuff, which again, that's just, you know, standard basic Google ad stuff, which by the way, Google ads has, be, I mean, come such a long way as far as their um, platform with their machine learning, artificial intelligence. They have automated bidding strategies now. They provide you with recommendations. Three years ago, any recommendation the Google plat, the ads platform would have given me, I'd tell you, I, I, I used to say to my screen, "Go shit in your hat." You know what I mean? Because they were awful. They would usually end up costing a lot of money and with very poor results. But I can tell you for a fact, because um, I still I manage a lot of ad stuff now. Um, that the the automated bidding strategies are are really 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 good now. In fact, all I do now is set up manual campaigns just long enough to get enough data into the account to where the recommendations start to appear. And what I'll do is I'll test different recommend recommendations that the ads platform 
uh, provides and kind of, you know, I take screenshots and things like that. And I'll test different targeting strat bidding, automated bidding strategies, things like that to see which ones provide the better results, lowers cost per conversion, all of that kind of stuff. And um, it's, it's really come a long way, guys. I can't say it still, it still can be expensive. It still takes time to dial a campaign in, but it's, in my opinion, if, if you haven't, I don't know, again, I don't know what it's like in Australia, but here in the States, they keep pushing more and more ad stuff above the fold and more and more SEO related ranking type stuff, right? So organic and, and organic maps listings below the fold with the carousels now, like the Google guaranteed uh, ads, regular Google ads, ads in the maps pack, like it's just insane. So I would recommend that, um, you know, you may, you may want to look at adding ads to your repertoire of uh, services because it's something that I think Google is going to continue pushing more people to paid services, including potentially GMB stuff. So I think it's something that if you're not proficient with yet, you probably should start start looking into it now. Okay.